to the book of Matthew. I am beginning studying this great book, the first book of the New Covenant. And of course, I'm studying it out of the Bible commentaries that we have, Dad's commentary on Matthew. And I would encourage every one of you, if you don't have that commentary on the book of Matthew, that you need to get it. It will help you and it will open up the Word of God to you. We're reading this morning from Matthew chapter 4. We'll begin reading with verse number 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zebulun and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, The people which sat in darkness. I'm so glad I saw the light. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has sprung up. Light is sprung up. This morning, I have good news for the sinner. This morning, I have good news for the alcoholic. This morning, I have good news for the drug addict. This morning, I have good news for the homosexual. This morning, I have good news for the sinner. The light has come. The light that shined in darkness is still here. And I want to minister just for a few minutes this morning on the simple subject, the light. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we come before you. In the name of your Son, Jesus. God, I must have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I know that there are sinners that are listening and watching. And this is their moment. This is their hour. Touch my lips. Help me to say what you placed in my heart this week for this time, this Sunday morning. And Lord, as George Whitefield cried out to you years ago in England, Give me souls or I die. I'm asking for souls. I'm asking for souls for the kingdom of God. I'm asking right now for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit even before the message is preached to begin to deal with the hearts of men and women, whether in the sanctuary or by radio, internet, or television. And Lord, I would ask this morning that we would see souls won into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Of course, the text that I read to you this morning is the description of the world of the day when Jesus began His public ministry. The world of that day when Jesus stepped out to begin His public ministry. In the Gentile world, it was a world of paganism. Darkness that covered the eyes of the people, worshiping statues, offering up human sacrifice. But I want you to notice that in the description that God gave us in this text, He also includes Israel in that condition. Even though Israel was the most religious country in the world of that day, even though they still offered up sacrifice, even though they still feigned allegiance to Jehovah, the fact of the matter was they were in darkness. Demon spirits were rampant. Demon possession was common. Demon oppression was the norm and the rule of the day. Even though they had the law of Moses, the law of Moses could not save. And religion... 
can only perpetuate darkness. Now let me say that again. Religion can only perpetuate darkness. And when Jesus came, He came to establish a whole new order. What the law could not do, grace through Jesus Christ could do. He was a man on a mission, and I'm so glad that He came. I want to make an analogy this morning. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that as we look back in time in history and we look at the spiritual condition of Israel of that day, I believe that you are looking as well as to the condition of America and the condition of the church today. I believe that they are parallel. I believe that they are one and the same. I believe that as Israel was chosen to be the womb of the Messiah, and this moment in time in history 2,000 years ago was to be their moment in time to embrace Jesus Christ as the Messiah. I believe as well that this is a moment in time for America. I believe that this is a moment in time for the church of Jesus Christ today in America. And I want to say this, and I don't say it with gladness, I say it with a broken heart. As Israel was in darkness 2,000 years ago, America is in darkness today. And as well, the church in America today is in just as big a darkness as the world is. And let me just make this statement. As the church goes, so goes the nation. Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. As the church goes, so goes the nation. That's why I can say this morning that the church is in darkness. And because of the church's rebellion, America is in the mess that it's in. You don't have to be a theologian today. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to know that things are not right in our country. There's a line in the great song, America the Beautiful, that says, America, America, God shed His grace on thee. And God, as He shed His grace on Israel 2,000 years ago, God has shed His grace on this nation as no other nation in the last 300 years. God has birthed this country. Oh, you're not here this morning. We are not the product of just a political upheaval. upheaval. But this country is, is in accordance with a divine revelation of God. This country was established for one reason, and that is to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. God has blessed this country. All the freedoms that we have, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, is all because America was founded upon one simple principle. In God we trust. But today... America has lost its moorings. America has thrown away its blessing. The grace of God has been rejected by and large. And listen to me. Light rejected is darkness accepted. But God gave me this word. God gave me this word. Light rejected is darkness accepted. And we have accepted the darkness. That which is wrong is now right. That which is right is now wrong. We have never had a greater generation of God-haters in this country as we do today. You can turn on the talk shows and they are brazen in their, in their description of Christianity, calling us fools. And, 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 and really, their argument is not with us. The fact of the matter is, their argument is with God. They hate God. They are God-haters. And they want to strike out. If you saw the local paper yesterday,